Welcome to another episode of The Brand Called You. Today I have a man of many, many talents with me, Pavan Chaudhary. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Ashutosh. Pavan is the CEO of Vigon India. He is a TV personality, he is an author and he is a speaker. So, Pavan, tell me a little bit about your early years. So, in my early years when I started in the corporate sector, it was a kind of a shock because I suddenly realized that whatever exposure I had had so far was very benign as compared to the dog-eat-dog, shark-infested, amoral corporate sector. The stakes were much higher here. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges which I thought I will have to overcome as I move on is how to find a way where the ethical man can retain competitive advantage and win. That became one of the parts of my study in okay. future also. Okay. And um, the other point was that I was coming not from a premier business school. And I quickly realized that I would have to work much harder on myself as a product, which I did for many years together, till I became the CEO of Yvonne, which is a very respected multinational, at the age of 32. So I was kind of satisfied that I'm at the front end of the pack, if not exactly at the first mm-hmm. uh, run of uh, that you know, cohort, which had graduated alongside me at the same time from premier schools. So that competition, I, ha- I, I had took my, a lot of time to overtake. And thereafter my, uh, interests diversified also. Very interesting. So, uh, you know, let's, you got multiple avatars, you know, mm-hmm. so but let's start first about your professional career. Mm-hmm. You said you became CEO of Vigon India at 32. Yeah. Um, what does Vigon India do? So, Vigon India is in catheters and medical devices. Mm-hmm. It's a French multinational. Our products are known for their quality worldwide. And our healthcare worker training, which comes along with those products, is also highly distinguished and sought after. Mm -hmm. So we say that we are a company of dependable products, dependable practices and dependable people. Mm -hmm. Most companies say that, but you will hear this echo resonating from the medical fraternity also about us. That's why it's on there. Very interesting. And you've been in the healthcare, if I can use the word devices space, Mm -hmm. for a while. So you must have seen Indian healthcare quite closely. Mm -hmm. What in your opinion uh, is the problem with Indian healthcare? It's a very, very big question. Very big question. But maybe you can give me the perspective of from devices. So the the, uh, Indian healthcare has multiple maladies. So there is the quantity, quantitatively, qualitatively, access and affordability. Quantitatively, we do not have enough uh, resources on the ground, uh, whether it is capital resources or human resources. Qualitatively, the quality of these resources as well as the technology which goes with it is suspect and can be improved. In terms of access and affordability also, there is a long way to go. So these are the symptoms. I think what ails Indian healthcare is what I would call the cobra effect. Mm -hmm. Cobra effect is a term which comes from economics, which uh, relates to uh, an incident actually from uh, colonial India. When the British were very concerned about the number of cobras in Delhi. Mm -hmm. So they came out with a scheme to reward anybody who gets a dead cobra in money. In the beginning, the scheme was successful. However, clever entrepreneurs after some time started breeding cobras to kill them and then claim the booty. Mm -hmm. When the government came to know about this, Mm -hmm. it of course will do the scheme. When these cobra breeders came to know about the fact they that the scheme, the they released on the cobras. So eventually, there were more cobras before 
after the scheme, well intentioned scheme, than before. Okay. So, cobra effect refers to the unintended adverse consequences of well intentioned schemes. Mm. So, India has been replete with such policy which is not thorough mm. and watertight uh, for mm. decades now. There is of course a strong intention of the current government and strong energy behind that. However, policies still need to be more thorough. And that is the main thing which ails Indian public health care. Indian private health care has been doing well. But one should be cautious about unintended consequences of new policy on private health care also, which is not doing right now as well as in the past. Mm. So it's a little wobbly now. Wonderful. And one more question, uh, you know, relating to your professional career. Uh, you know, you mentioned that you are consulted by many on business and life. Share some examples with me. Actually, the spectrum which I, uh, uh, which concerns with me is quite varied. You have the startups and you have the large business families, which have almost a global footprint also. Mm -hmm. Startups are run by people like you and me also, who have been earlier running big companies mm -hmm. and now they are having a small shop mm -hmm. with limited human support. The problems are there in, on either sides. So the startups have the problems of limited human support, limited capital, scaling up, etc. Even the top businessman who consults, he also, and a rich businessman, he also has problems. Richness itself is a problem, which people who are not rich sometimes may not be able to see. Mm -hmm. Because richness isolates you. And it takes you through the acquisition of things a little away from people. Then when you are rich, you say no many a time. When you say no many a time, also you become socially isolated. This little miserliness takes you away from society and you don't get the social affirmation which is required for happiness. Mm -hmm. Also in rich business families, there is there may be a fight for turf. Turf means how much I'm doing Correct. and how much I'm getting. Sure. So uh, both the sides have their own problems and both the sides somewhere are looking for happiness through the main pillars which can bring it. That is work, love and health. If all these three pillars are working well, including psychological health, then the growth, etc., comes and it is enjoyable. Very so, have I answered your question? Yeah, very interesting. So, let's move to your next uh, avatar, which is as a journalist and a TV personality. Uh, you've written several books. Mm -hmm. Tell me about these books. So, my main work, I think, is a book called When You Are Sinking, Become a Submarine. Mm -hmm. Uh, how a good person can really win. It is on how a principled man in the real world can defeat the unprincipled man. Mm -hmm. This is not usually so easy. Usually the unprincipled man wins. Mm -hmm. So this book is about that. Okay. The Another book is Machiavelli for Moral People. Mm -hmm. And another is uh, Trilogy of Wisdom. Trilogy of Wisdom is on Kabir's spiritual wisdom, mm -hmm. Chanakya's political wisdom, and Confucius's social wisdom, where I have tried to highlight this hero, Kabir and uh, uh, Chanakya, you would already be knowing about, or Indians would already be knowing about. But Confucius is the genius in that book, mm -hmm. who is a little unexposed in India. I've tried to bring how even in simple things like which have been advocated for a long time like balance where Aristotle says you should go for the golden mean Buddha also says go for a golden mean but Confucius goes beyond them he says just by balancing myself is not enough 
I have to balance myself with others also. Relative balance. Relative balance. So he says that the elder brother should be, and the younger brother should be respectful of the elder brother. But the elder brother also has to be kind to the younger brother. So he has taken balance to interpersonal space and brought some justice to relationships. And that's a and that is also applied to mm-hmm. boss and subordinate mm-hmm. subordinate relationship. And uh, he's uh, he's a genius, which I think um, business also needs to know. Yes, I'm I'm, I'm a great uh, follower of Confucius super uh, Confucian thinking. I've been I've been to China at uh, least seventy times in the last thirty years. Yeah, and um, he's had such a huge impact correct, in the world. Correct, absolutely. In fact. I myself read a lot of Chanakya mm-hmm. and uh, Confucius. I think they are two of the great thinkers of this world. Superb. So we should share our uh, libraries with each other. Sure, we should do that. My next question to you is that you host a program called Hum Aise Kyu Hain. Um, my question to you is exactly the same. Hum Aise Kyu Hain and Aap Karte Kya Hain TV program. So this was a program which was offered to me by the government of India which was interested in maybe supporting me in bringing socio-economic change or socio-economic reform in a mm-hmm. humble way. Mm-hmm. So in many ways, we are a self-serving, indisciplined and uh, chaotic and hypocritical society. Mm-hmm. So the idea was to engage with experts like you are calling uh, to your show mm-hmm. here to learn from there. What are the from from them? What are the sociological, psychological, economic moorings of our makeup? Mm-hmm. And uh, that is what the program was about, and okay. it was quite successful. We did a lot of work in healthcare in this okay. program also. Okay. And which uh, uh, was DDP National, DD fully National. sponsored by the government. Okay, very interesting. And then you know, as a columnist, mm-hmm. you know, uh, you. Right for whom and uh, on what? So my first column was with Deccan Chronicle. It was called Sacred Bull, mm-hmm. which is when I was, thanks to my exposure to European thinkers, I was coming out of my little, say, dogmatic slumber. Mm-hmm. And I was looking at spirituality with, let me say, more authentic lenses rather than the religious mm-hmm. lens. So it was on on this that you can approach that spiritual bliss through the agnostic space also. That was sacred bull. Okay. And um, then uh, Times of India offered me a column, Burgao, mm-hmm. uh, Mera Gao, Mera Desh, mm-hmm. which was on social reform and uh, hygiene and healthcare reform. Mm-hmm. Uh, so those were the two columns which I did. Okay. And um, amongst your books, you also have a trilogy on wisdom. Yeah. Uh, tell me about this. So that was the book I spoke of. The Confucius. Shanakya, ah, Confucius okay. and Kabir. Okay. So that, that was the... And is this book available on Amazon? Yes, yes. Okay. So it's called the Trilogy of Wisdom. Trilogy of Wisdom. Okay. And when you wrote this book, hmm. was there a lot of research that you did? Or when did you first get uh, you know, really interested in... Confucian thinking and uh, Chanakya. So, and of course you said Buddha. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, as I told you that um, I had to differentiate myself as a product. Mm-hmm. And I realized that the socio-economic mainspring mm-hmm. is what drives markets. Mm-hmm. So, you cannot stamp your will on the market you have to go with the socio-economic grain of the market and its ecosystem Mm -hmm. to really emerge a winner on a long-term basis. Mm -hmm. So, this is where my interest in liberal sciences grew, which I feel are the mothers of management. Mm -hmm. For example, marketing grows out from economics, psychology and sociology. Mm -hmm. HR grows out from philosophy, um, sociology, and psychology. So, I decided to 
look more deeply and train the spotlight on these mm-hmm. liberal sciences to get an advantage over a conventional MBA. Okay. And this is where I got interested in all this mm-hmm. because uh, Confucius, I feel he's one of the greatest experts on HR and I'm Correct. sure you will yes. agree. Yes. Even today in the temples of learning like the ha- Harvard and Stanford, etc., we haven't seen uh, uh, many geniuses who have been able to improve what he said uh, in the context where he was speaking mm. from. Mm. So this is where the interest grew in various areas. Mm. Public affairs is very important. How the government moves, particularly in healthcare, is extremely important. And you should be able to engage with them and also show them uh, your most objective light to illuminate the path they are taking forward. Fascinating. Absolutely fascinating. So let's talk a little bit about startups. You know, you do a lot of work with startups um, and obviously you mentor them. You probably invest in them also. So when you look at a startup and my questions to you are based entirely on your learnings. Mm-hmm. Should, an, uh, should a startup entrepreneur go solo mm. or should they have a co-founder? I feel he should have a co-founder mm. because co-founder brings capital, energy mm. that gets multiplied and anxiety gets divided. And this is a lonely, it's a steep climb. Mm. Startup is a steep climb. And if it is too lonely, Mm -hmm. you don't have company, it can become uh, extremely asphyxiating. Mm -hmm. And you might disembark from that journey just because you do not have somebody who is in it as much as you are. Correct. Correct. So I feel co-founder. Co-founder. Wonderful. So my next question to you would be that, again, based on your learnings, what are some of the basic mistakes mm. a lot of co- a lot of startup founders make? So I spoke about the Cobra effect. Mm. I feel the planning of many startups is not thorough. Mm. You need to be thorough. Mm. Secondly, you need to be focused on profits. I say sales is vanity, mm. profits is sanity, and collections is reality. Do not, in my view, though uh, there are many examples in the new world Mm -hmm. about companies getting funding after funding despite not having profits. Mm -hmm. But I feel profits are very important and collections uh, prove that the profits which you are getting are not just on the books, Mm -hmm. but are in your cash box. Mm -hmm. So that is the second thing. Third is, I feel when you are going for... uh, requirements for funding, etc. You should not waste too much time uh, casting a very broad and ignorant net. Mm -hmm. You should look at the gene of the investors, whether they are venture capitalists Mm -hmm. or P funds and what is it that you require. Mm -hmm. So you funnel them through that. Then the next funnel should be the genre, whether they have made investments in Uh, products or companies Mm -hmm. like yours Mm -hmm. and the third is geography. Mm -hmm. They should be uh, at least operating somewhere in India if not in your own city. Mm -hmm. So these are uh, uh, two or three things which I feel they need to keep in mind. And my next question from a startup perspective is that at what stage should an entrepreneur raise money? Because again I get very different views. Some people say bootstrap as long as you can. Some other people tell me, raise whenever you can. So I feel that it is contextual Mm -hmm. to the environment. Let us say today in the tech space, Mm -hmm. you are getting money, but we do not know how long this joyride will continue. Second, so one context is the environment. Mm -hmm. Second context is internal situation. That means how long you have been in the market, how much you have already spent of your own. Are you looking at an investor just to come 
in and uh, add to your kitty or it is a validation of your own belief in your uh, your idea or you want to bring him in because there is some strategic or pr advantage to be had so you have to look at it through various lenses and decide which focal lens are relevant for your question and come to that answer hmm. have i answered your question yeah. okay and my last question to you uh, on startups uh, at what stage should a startup think of scaling up so i feel that once you have got a uh, strong and uh, natural uh, return from the market return or, the, or response from the market mm-hmm. where the product which you have finally arrived at is making the cash register chime mm-hmm. that is the time you that is one of the signals of uh, getting ready to scale up mm-hmm. and of course you should have tested the appeal of that uh, uh, product for a wider market right. so market testing i believe a lot in market test sure so uh, pavan i have time for a few questions for you personally go ahead you know after such a successful career and for someone who has so many diverse interests from television to writing to you know uh, doing your own show to running a very large healthcare company over the years Have you had anyone who's had a strong influence on you and if yes what have you learned from them many many mm-hmm. let me touch here with you in on the economics front i have learned a lot from pankaj bhai patel mm-hmm. how he gathered inside us cadilla mm-hmm. the gems of the industry mm-hmm. and how he enabled them to propel his company 100 times mm-hmm. in the last 20 years mm-hmm. more than 100 times sure. actually in the socio psychological world i have learned a lot from osho okay and his sharpness and sensitivity is to my mind venerable mm-hmm. in the socio political world i have learned a lot from robert green mm-hmm. who tells how the socio economic and socio means socio political mm-hmm. also socio economic uh, main springs can be leveraged for commercial success if you go deeper mm-hmm. into his uh, stand so okay. and there are many men i'm sure i'm a i'm a big student wonderful i have you know about uh, after this uh, Uh, interviews over i will be learning from you mm-hmm. because i have this proverbial invisible school bag on my shoulder mm-hmm. i learn from everybody wonderful well then you you and i have one more thing in common which is osho oh great i'm a very big listener of osho super he was my super senior in college okay. he, he graduated from uh, sagar university where i did my b pharmacy from I see. and he was a contemporary of my parents i see okay wonderful So my next question to you is that what would be three words mm. that define Pavan? Only three? Just three? Adjectives? Okay. <laughs> Call it whatever you want. Okay. So I am original. Mm-hmm. Um, I am loyal, mm-hmm. and maybe I am a bit wise. Okay. wonderful very nice words so let me move on uh, and i'm going to take two more questions mm. my next question to you is on failure mm. you know uh, and i ask this question to all my guests mm. because it is my view that in india particularly we don't teach children mm. that it's okay to fail mm. and that manifests itself in our behavior patterns on traffic light my car must be right in front in an aircraft even as sitting at the back i must get off first etc etc yet we fail all the time yes. so my question to you is what are some of your learnings from some of your mistakes or your failures so first 
answering the first part of your uh, or responding to the first part of the, your very pertinent comment. Mm. We don't teach our kids to fail. Mm. We might give lip service to failure. Correct. But how can you teach your kids to fail when you admire mm. a riches to rag story? Correct. You should have some riches to rag stories mm. who have not reached their rags because of any wrongdoing, but who have reached their rags because of the risk they took and did not pay off. Mm. And now they have moved from their palace to their log cabin and they are happy and they are enjoying life. So this kind of stories have to come in our folklore. Then we will be really teaching them uh, failure because I feel one learns a lot from failure. Regarding my failures, I think one of the big failure taught me to keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. This was one of the greatest learnings which I got from a big failure. Uh, in uh, It was in a university mm -hmm. where we were a very thickly knit and um, similar like-minded group of friends. Mm -hmm. uh, and in an unguarded moment, I said something which was used by those who were let's say, jealous of us mm -hmm. to break our group and the group broke and they could not, the other side could not even rebuild anything. Mm -hmm. So the whole class printed. Oh, wow. Very unfortunate. Yeah. So my last question, you in a life so well lived where you achieved so much. Do you have any regrets? Yeah. Some uh, harsh judgments about people. Mm -hmm. Some harsh words spoken. Mm -hmm. mm, a couple of relations lost because of that from either side. Those are the regrets. Pawan, thank you so much. It's been such a pleasure speaking to you. And I look forward to reading all the stuff that you're writing and to keeping in touch. Absolutely. It was a very big pleasure. And I look forward to now learning from you. Thank you for listening to the Brand Called You podcast. Be sure to visit tbcy.in to join the conversation, access show notes and discover fantastic bonus content. You can follow us on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. Simply search for The Brand Called You. Thank you and see you next week.